let's talk a little bit about proteins. Uh, proteins are very important ingredients in the food and the type and quality of protein can help you determine whether a food is a good one or not. Protein quality is measured with a term that we call biologic value and it's pretty much measuring how effectively the protein can be digested and utilized by the pet that's eating it. Uh, there are a lot of items that have protein in it that really are not very digestible to a dog or cat. So shoe leather has protein, alfalfa hay has protein, but these proteins are not in a form that can be digested and absorbed by dogs and cats. So for a dog or cat, those proteins have a biological value of zero. Uh, the perfect protein is the egg. Eggs are really pretty amazing things. Inside the egg, when it's a raw egg, is everything needed to make a little chick out of, with nothing extra, nothing wasted, exactly what's needed to make a chick. And when this egg hatches open and the baby chick comes out, there isn't anything left over, and there's no waste products inside the shell. So the amino acids that make up the protein inside the egg are the perfect amino acids to build a chick with. The protein in the egg has a biologic value of 94, and that's about as high as you can get. Milk protein comes next. Casein, the protein that's in milk, has a biological value of 80, and that's kind of a similar reason to the chick. The mother needs to produce milk that's going to be just about perfect for nourishing a baby animal without a whole lot of waste or excess. Next on the list comes meat. So chicken, beef, fish, they all have a pretty similar biologic value of about 74. Grains and nuts and beans have protein too, and uh, vegetarians like me get a lot of our protein from eating these protein sources. Um, beans especially have uh, high quality protein in them. Um, soybeans, which are used a lot in pet foods, have a biologic value of 73, so only one point less than the biologic value of meat. So soy is actually a good source of protein for um, a non-meat product. Um, other grains such as barley and corn have biologic values in the 60s. These are not as desirable forms of protein. And so you want to look on a pet food label and see that a meat or a um, egg protein is higher up on the list and the, um, the less quality uh, protein ingredients in, in grains and, and beans appear lower down on the list because they're not as, as high a quality as some of the other protein sources that you might see. Um, these are usually a secondary protein source in the food. A good pet food manufacturer calculates down to the gram or milligram everything that an animal needs and then puts this precise amount in the food. Like the egg, not too much and not too little. So this is Kitten Caboodle Adult Cat Formula, and you can see that the first ingredient on this list is ground yellow corn. So it's not a protein source, which is what you want to see first on the list, and the corn is ground. We don't want to see flour. We don't want to see a ground product. We want whole grains because those have more fiber in them, more vitamins uh, in the outer covering of the, of the seed that's used. Uh, we want that stuff staying in the food. Uh, corn gluten meal is actually a protein source. Gluten is the protein part of the corn or the wheat. Um, and corn gluten meal and wheat gluten meal have a lot of protein in them. They're about 80% protein and they're very digestible, but it's not high quality protein because it's plant protein. Uh, plant proteins are designed to make a plant. They're not the ideal protein to build the tissues that a mammal needs. So we don't want a, a plant gluten product as our first protein ingredient on the list. Soybean meal is a little higher quality, um, but we don't get to chicken or chicken byproduct meal until the fourth item on the list, and that's way too far down. We'd like to see that higher up. Uh, beef tallow is the fat source in the food. That's not real good quality either. Um, fish meal is fine protein, but again, it's way at the bottom of the list, so there's a lot less fish protein in it than there is ground yellow corn and corn gluten meal. So not a food that you would want to feed your cat. A little bit higher up um, in quality is uh, Whiskas. Uh, Whiskas has poultry byproduct meal as the first ingredient, and that's fine. Again, we want an animal protein as the first thing on the list. Um, but then we have ground corn. We also have ground wheat. And again, I don't want ground carbohydrates. I want whole grains in there. Um, corn gluten meal appears on here, and then the fat content of the food. Um, then we have natural chicken and turkey flavor, and we have a few other carbohydrate ingredients underneath that, but these are probably just very small amounts used as a thickener um, because there's not very much in there. If there's more flavoring than there is of those ingredients, um, that means that there's not a whole lot in there. So the basic ingredients that make up the food are these first few. 
This is the uh, basic formula for science diet adult cat. Um, this is a high quality food and this is what I've been looking for and talking about. We have chicken byproduct meal, so we have animal protein as our first ingredient. Um, and again, most of the byproduct meal that's, that's used in science diet foods is going to be high quality product. It's going to have liver and kidneys and heart in it, good quality internal organs that an animal in the wild would normally eat as part of their diet. The second ingredient is a carbohydrate and it's a whole grain. So it's the whole corn nugget, um, not just the internal carbohydrate part. Um, brewer's rice also is, a, is more of a whole grain. That's our second carb. Um, and then we have a secondary protein source, which is the corn gluten meal. And our fat source is animal fat, which is a little higher in quality than that beef tallow that you saw earlier. So a very simple ingredient list and one that's got high quality nutrition as the first couple ingredients. Here's Science Diet's dog food, uh, very similar. Chicken is the first ingredient, so we have a good protein source first. Uh, then we have some whole grain corn and some whole grain sorghum, whole grain wheat. So we have three carbohydrates, um, but we also have some chicken by byproduct meal, so we have two good protein sources um, and then three whole grain uh, carbohydrate sources. We have a little soybean meal and corn gluten meal to supplement the protein. And then again, we have animal fat as our source of fat. So much higher quality proteins and carbohydrates used by Science Diet. Um, this is an example of a food that's got a lot of stuff in it. I don't like when I have a really long ingredient list because it gets very confusing again as to how much of each individual item is actually in the food and what it's um, supplying nutritionally. So we have debone chicken and chicken meal first. So we have good protein sources. Um, we have ground barley. Um, and we have um, ground brown rice. And again, this is more like flour. You don't have the whole grains. We have another flour source down here. I would much rather see whole grains in the food. The oatmeal, it doesn't say whether that's whole oatmeal or whether that's the, um, the flaky stuff that's not as good for you as the steel cut whole oatmeal is. Um, there's two things of tomato in here, tomato pumice and tomatoes, which is two ways of saying the same thing. And I don't really know why they've used tomato as a food source. I'm not sure what that provides for dogs. Um, not very much nutrition in a tomato. It's mostly water. Um, canola oil is a source of fats for the food. Uh, just like with proteins, you're going to have better quality fats in animal products than you are in vegetable products. So canola oil I am not as thrilled about for a fat source as I would be for animal fat. Um, we have some rice bran providing some fiber, um, some white fish in there, um, which is fine, and um, some chicken flavor. So your white fish is probably a fairly small amount. It's way down there with the chicken flavor on, on the list. This is another formula from Wellness. Uh, they call it their white fish and sweet potato diet, and white fish is the first ingredient on here, um, but we have two kinds of barley, so they've just kind of divided their barley up into two different piles to disguise how much barley there's really in there. And again, both of them are ground, so it's not whole barley. Uh, we have rye flour as a third ingredient, and I don't want flour, I would like to have whole grain. Uh, Manhattan fish meal is fine, and that's what the white fish is in the label. Um, but it's the fourth ingredient down here, and the sweet potato doesn't show up until number six. So even though they're touting those items in the name of the food, there really um, isn't that much of the, the fish stuff in there um, compared to how much barley there is, and the sweet potato is actually a fairly um, low down on the list as far as um, how much is in there. We have our canola oil again, not so great. Our tomato pumice, which um, is not that worthwhile to have in a food I don't think. And then we have our fish flavor and some ground flax seed. And as we discussed earlier, um, flax is a source of fatty acids for people, but it's not digestible by dogs and cats. And so there's no reason for that to be in there other than to provide some fiber. It's not going to give you any fatty acids in the diet. In tiny amounts, less than the chicken flavor, we have vegetables. And again, a lot of manufacturers will tout the fact that they have fruits and vegetables in their food, like that's a wonderful thing. But you have to eat a lot of carrots or blueberries or spinach uh, in order to get the um, nutrients that, that are supposedly what you're getting by buying a food that has that stuff in it. To get enough lutein and antioxidants from blueberries to really make a significant difference in health, you're going to have to eat a cup of blueberries a day. Uh, it's not going to do any good to have one or two in the in 
in the food. Uh, and then after the vitamins, so again, very teeny amounts, smaller even than we have for our micronutrients, uh, we have some additives that, again, supposedly uh, make the food healthier. We have glucosamine and chondroitin, which in the tiny amounts that are in this food are not going to do any good at all. Uh, we have chicory, which is a prebiotic and is a good ingredient, but again, it's in such a small amount in the food that it's probably not doing anything. Uh, we have some root extract, garlic, uh, yucca, green tea, um, and extracts of probiotics, none of which probably are going to do you any good because there's simply not enough of them in the food. Uh, this is one of Canada's foods. Uh, they have a lot of extra ingredients that they add to their foods as well that are supposedly wonderful for pets, but again appear in awfully small amounts. Canada also has what it says is human grade chicken and turkey meal. Um, and again, there's no USDA recognition of that term. So what it is they're considering human grade, I'm really not sure. Um, and again, I think it's kind of wasteful to use the best parts of the, the meat for cat and dog food. Um, I would rather that they made good use of the byproducts, which are um, just as nutritious, if not more nutritious, uh, than the actual muscle meat that we like to eat. So we have flaxseed, alfalfa, rosemary extract, sage extract, amaranth, if you look at Canada's brochure, they have um, descriptions of all the wonderful, miraculous things that these ingredients are supposed to do. So amaranth um, supposedly calms the stomach, reduces tissue swelling, removes worms and parasites from the digestive tract. Without some scientific evidence and testing of the food that tells me that yes, we fed this food to dogs and the dogs that ate this food had fewer parasites, I don't believe any of it. Again, these are very small amounts. Uh, these supposed benefits that some of these things have are pretty dubious in dogs and cats at all. Uh, cranberry meal supposedly prevents the spread of bacterial infections in kidneys and the urinary tract. Cranberry meal, you have to have a very specific extract from the cranberry. It has to be very concentrated and in fairly large amounts. We have cranberry supplements that we use for dogs that have chronic bladder infections, um, but they're going to have way more cranberry meal and a type that's processed specially to get you the benefits um, because, again, just to put some crushed cranberries in the food is not going to do enough good to have any sort of medical benefit. And it's the same with all the rest of these ingredients.